Brent Brooks from High Rise Firefighting. And today I'm going to continue talking about our stamp pipe kit. Uh, I give an overview of the kit and I've been breaking down what uh, each of the equipment is designed to do. So having said that, today is about the gate gauge and 45 degree elbow width uh, bleeder. This is truly the meat and potatoes and should be in every single stamp pipe kit. And I'm going to explain why. Uh, we keep it pre-assembled just like this. It fits in our kit. The handle sticks out um, just a tad and that's okay. Um, we used to have the, the 45 degree elbow with bleeder off and we gave the uh, firefighters the options to put it on either side. The problem with that is that if we get into trouble where a uncharged hose line gets um, a door closed onto it and we charge it, we're trapping that nozzle firefighter on one side of the door and the control firefighter on the other side. It's happened to us and it's very, very difficult to get a hose spanner off static pressure and get that off to bleed that water off. This is nice and easy. This particular valve is only 12 turns when it's fully open. So it's 12 turns to fully close. We can close this, open our bleed valve, step on the hose, open the door, bleed that nozzle firefighter, and reset and we're way back to firefight. We just close the valve again, and we set our pressure and we're off to the race. Generally, in our city, uh, we open this about four to four and a half turns, but we do have the full potential to open this uh, 12 turns, which is all the way. If you don't have a gauge in your standpipe kit, you have no idea what you're flowing and you don't have the ability to troubleshoot. You need to know what you're flowing. If you hook up that system and you have no pressure, you have to start thinking of a plan A, plan B, or plan C, and you get to do that right off the hop. Charging a line, advancing a line, and getting to the fire department door and try to make entry and realize you have no pressure, uh, you're just making a mess of that building. You're inviting smoke into the hallway, you're inviting smoke into that stairwell, you're really making a mess of the building. It's because you didn't have a gate engaged and you weren't able to troubleshoot or get that plan A, plan B, or C going because of this issue. Um, you don't go to a residential house fire and decide not to use the gauges on your fire truck. You do use the, the gauges. The pump operator at a high rise fire is the control firefighter. They're not down on the street at, on the fire truck. They're up one floor below controlling your pressure. They're, they're the um, engineer or pump operator. So that's why we keep it pre-assembled. We have the option in our kit to add an elbow on either side um, with our 60 degree elbow. The other uh, thing I like about gates and make sure you do your research is we've had different manufacturers where the static pressure or the pressure that's coming off the building is too great for us to even open um, this wheel. You'd need an 18 inch pipe wrench. If you can't open this up, you need an 18 inch pipe wrench on here to open it. Uh, we found this Elkhart uh, brass one has been very easy to open up with buildings with uh, lots and lots of pressure. As far as water damage goes, uh, again, we can shut the valve uh, outlet off um, on the building. We can close this, keep the static pressure in the line, and take this to where we want to drain it. Take it back to the hall if you wanted to. Um, stairwells in all high-rise buildings, believe it or not, are meant to have water flown in them. They're also meant to drain, drain uh, water out of them as well. Um, buildings that are sprinkler, where you think the water's going at the end of the day, they're eventually going to go down the stairwell. So uh, don't be scared to set your gate and gauge flowing water down the stairs. And don't be scared to disconnect this and take it somewhere and drain it. During a firefight, there's no such thing as water damage. We want to punch that fire in the throat and get it knocked down as soon as possible. The longer we let that fire burn, the longer we let that smoke out of that fire unit, the longer we let that smoke out of the hallway, the longer we let that smoke into the stairwell, we want to put a punch right off the get-go to that fire and eliminate it. By doing so, uh, high-rise fires are more smoke events than they are fire events. 
We need to stop inviting more people into our problems and that's the smoke. So let's put the fire out um, super quick. Uh, and saying that, if the building has a PRV system, it's required to be fully open. So we need to use our gate and gauge to control our pressure. I didn't want to talk about nozzles because I do talk about it, but it's sitting right here beside me. When we look at nozzles, we're going in with a big punch right off the get-go, the full potential. That's why I don't like stacked tips. On a stacked tip, I'm going with a small tip and eventually get to my bigger tip, but I want to punch that nozzle out, or I want to punch that fire out as soon as possible. If I don't have reach a stream because I have a low pressure, I'm going to know that um, right off the hop. I can actually switch tip sizes and go with a smaller um, orifice, but just be aware that you don't have the same flow that you have. So I like to go in with the big guns right off the get-go, our proper flows, and get that fire knocked down to, to um, prevent smoke from spreading. That's it on the gate gauge 45 degree elbow with bleeder and how we have it set up. I'm Brent Brooks from High Rise Firefighting. Be safe.